Okay, welcome to topic six on sediment transport within the natural channels module. Uh, and in this first video, we're going to talk about bed load and sediment load. And as part of this, we'll talk about the different modes of sediment transport, the factors that control um, sediment load, whether it's supply limited or transport limited, and then we'll work through a few practical examples of streams with different um, modes of sediment transport and different controls on the sediment loads. So firstly, just to recap on some material we covered in the overview um, uh, week, um, we have these different modes of sediment transport. So focusing on, on the side over here where we're dealing with the inorganic material transport. Now there's the two um, sources of sediment. We've got the, the bed load material and then we've got the wash load. The bed, material, bed load material comes from the bed of the river. Um, not surprisingly. The wash load is much finer material and that might come from the riverbanks or it might come from the hill slopes and so on upstream um, in the catchment. Um, so that, that, that um, separation is based on the source of the sediment, so bed material or wash, wash load. The other separation is based on the mode of transport, whether it's suspended above the bed, that's the suspended load, or whether it's rolling or um, bouncing or sliding along the bed, that's the bed load. So don't get confused between these two different um, ways of separating the, um, the sediment load. You've got the bed material load and the wash load, or you have the bed load and the suspended load. Important to make, um, to, be, to be clear about um, the two ways of uh, classifying sediment load. And um, if we think about the way these the sediment concentration for these different modes of transport varies with, with, um, with, with depth within the water profile. Um, we can see here that the, the bed load, of course, is transported along the bed. So the concentration is high right at the bed and zero above the bed. The suspended bed material load, um, so this might be sands or gravels and so on, um, the concentration decreases as we move away from the bed. So it's higher, closer to the bed um, than at the, at the water surface. The wash load, this is much finer material, it might be silts and clays, um, is generally well mixed through the water column and we have a much more uniform uh, distribution of the, um, of the concentrations through the water profile. And if we sum those three lots, the, the, uh, the bed load, the suspended bed material load and the wash load, we get the total um, suspended load um, over on the far side. So, now we're going to talk about what actually is the sediment load as, 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 as a quantity. Now, if, we think, if we're at a point in time, we think about sediment being transported down the stream, just like water is being transported down the stream. You know, discharge is measured based on um, volume per unit time, meters cubed per second or liters per second. Sediment load is measured based on mass per unit time. So it could be tons per day or kilograms per, per hour or, or whatever. That's, the, uh, that's the, the units for sediment load. And there's two um, different uh, factors that can limit the amount of sediment being transported um, within a river channel. At any given point in time, you have one of either of these two factors which are limiting sediment um, loads. The first one is sediment supply. So if there's no sediment being supplied to the channel, there's no sediment to transport, and so you have a zero sediment load. It doesn't matter how fast the river's flowing, how strong the current is or the shear stresses is, if there's no sediment to transport, the sediment load is zero. And so that's a situation where we have supply limitations. So sediment supply controls sediment load. Typically, the wash load is supply limited. It's fine material. It can be easily transported over long distances in most um, river conditions. Um, the, uh, the factor that determines the amount of the massive uh, wash load that's being transported per unit time is the amount that's being supplied from the upstream catchment. The other um, condition that, that can limit sediment load is the transport capacity. Now the transport capacity is based on the hydraulic conditions of the river channel, the, the, the shear stress, the volume of water, the, the bed width and so on. Um, and the sediment, so the sediment transport capacity, if there's plenty of supply, um, then, then it's, you can only transport um, as much sediment load as the river has got transport capacity to transport. So, this, so you can talk about a river that's transport limited. Um, it's transporting sediment right at its, uh, its maximum capacity. 
And typically bed material load is transport limited. But that's certainly not always the case. You can imagine, for example, a situation where you have fairly large bed material that's transported at high flows, but at low flows, the shear stresses aren't big enough to transport that bed material. And so in that case, you could get a supply limitation temporarily for a period of time during a low flow period. So now let's work through some practical examples of rivers which are either supply limited or they're transport limited. In this particular river, it's transport limited because there is plenty of sediment for the river to transport. We can see all the way along this meander bend, the point bar on this meander bend, these are loose uh, gravels which have been transported by the river and deposited here. The river is competent to move these sediments. Um, and so the limitation on transporting these sediments on downstream is the capacity of the river to transport them. So it's transport limited. And here we can see the same, um, uh, a similar river from the ground level. And we see relatively fine sediments. These are sands and coarse sands by the looks of it, uh, gravels and cobbles in, 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 you know, on the bars. Um, so this is a very um, dynamic river, um, highly mobile sediments. You can tell because there's not much vegetation established uh, either on the bank or on the bars. Um, and, um, and this is um, a, supply, a transport limited situation. A very similar case again, this is a braided um, river channel, remember our plan forms, um, high sediment loads, and again, transport limited. This is a situation where a, a mine um, is, is actually released tailings, this is sort of um, sediments, uh, into the river. Um, and we can see right down here, this is the, the former course of the river, and when the tailings were released, it's, it's, it's become realigned. Um, and widened, the transport capacity is increased. Um, and in this case, it's also transport limited because there's plenty of sediment to transport um, and the river is actually adjusting um, to increase its transport capacity so it can meet um, the, the, the volume being supplied from the, from the mine. Uh, here's another case where there's plenty of sediment um, being supplied to the river channel and it's transport limited. It's the case where there's a bushfire. It's the Tambo River catchment in eastern Victoria. Um, a very severe bushfire went through this catchment a few years ago. Um, and after the fire, there was a, a, a rainfall event. Um, and because the fire burnt the, um, the soils and created this sort of hydrophobicity, um, very much higher runoff was produced um, from, from the catchment in those rainfall events. Um, there was no um, vegetation to slow the water down, so it had a very high erosion rate from the catchments, and all that sediment was washed down and dumped in the valleys, as we can see here, all these trees being partially buried by these massive debris flows being delivered to, to the valley. And so that provides a, a very large amount of sediment to the river network, which then over time is gradually shifted downstream. And so we have here a situation which is supply uh, sorry, transport limited because there's plenty of supply to the river. In this case, it's actually completely dry, and so there's no flow. The transport capacity is zero, so the the the, um, the sediment load zero. But um, even when when there's flow, as the flow increases and the transport capacity increases, then the um, the sediment load will equal the transport capacity. Now let's look at some examples of supply limited sediment loads. This is an urban stream. Um, there's absolutely nowhere for the sediment to come from. The, all the surfaces have been paved or covered by buildings and so on. Um, there may be a very few places where there might be some erosion, perhaps on building sites, for example, or in, in gardens, um, which are not well managed. But there's almost no sediment being supplied to this river channel. Um, and so although there's plenty of capacity to transport sediment, um, the sediment load will be very close to zero. So it's a supply limited case. This is a clay-lined um, river channel, and typically clay-lined channels are um, supply limited. There's no sands and gravels being supplied to the channel for the transport downstream. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and so there may be small amounts of sediment that we can't see, and some of these clays are being eroded slowly, although they're cohesive, so the erosional rates will be slow. Um, so this is supply limited. This is an upland stream, there's bedrock in this river, very large boulders probably rolled in from the side of the valley, uh, rarely mobilised. Uh, you can tell because there's moss on them and they've got um, 
you know, very angular, sharp edges, so they haven't been rolled and, 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 and worn over um, as, as transported. Um, and so this, this is typically a supply limited case where you have these upland bedrock channels. You know, very high shear stresses in here, plenty of transport capacity, but no, no um, sediment to be transported downstream. And finally, this is the Goulburn River just downstream of Lake Eildon. Um, Lake Eildon is a very large uh, water supply reservoir um, and uh, all the, the sediment that's being delivered from the catchment upstream of Lake Eildon is trapped within Lake Eildon and Lake Eildon is gradually filling up with sediment very, very slowly. It's, the capacity has hardly changed since it was constructed, but there is a sediment deposited in the bed of Lake Eildon from the upstream catchment. Downstream of Lake Hilton, where this photo was taken, there's a very low sediment load being supplied from the outlet at the, um, from, the, from Lake Hilden. Um, and so we have a supply limited situation. And what happens in, in that case is you get erosion because there's an excess of sediment transport capacity. It erodes the bed and the banks of the river. Um, and it removes the fine material, leaving the coarser particles at the surface, which creates an armoring layer. layer. So whenever you're in the field in a river and you see a bed that's armoured, a river bed that's armoured, you've got this coarse material um, that overlays a, a finer um, sediment underneath, that is a sign that you have a supply limited uh, situation.